Hey Haley, here is my vlog 2, the high bar back squat technical model. So the first thing we're going to look at here is going to be breathing mechanics. And we look at breathing because a lot of individuals don't actually understand how to properly breathe into their diaphragm and brace their spine. And this is going to be very important when we're going to execute the high bar back squat. So what we're going to do with the individuals, we're going to get them to lie down supine, breathe in through their nose, get them to fill their diaphragm, which may take a bit of coaching with some individuals, it varies, and get them to fully exhale through their mouth with pursed lips and get the ribs to drop down. What we're trying to achieve here is a neutral spine where the ribcage and the pelvis are aligned parallel to one another. Um, we want this position because when we have a bar in our back, we want to make sure that the spine is in a good neutral position and that all the muscles around that spine can co-contract to provide the optimal stability for when we are going to squat. We often use a black rubber band under the lumbar spine to give some tactile feedback to the individual to let them know that their spine is neutral and that the ribcage and pelvis is aligned. If the band was be able to pull easily out, that would mean that the person is still in too much extension. So getting into the technical model now of the high bar back squat, I broke it down into five areas. And these five areas are racking the bar in the walkout, the descent, the bottom position, the ascent, and then the walk-in and the re-racking of the bar. So when racking the bar out, first thing is getting the individual to grip, to grip the bar with a grip that's comfortable for them. A good starting point for most individuals is to put the hand in the center of the knurling. Now, grip on the bar is going to vary for each individual depending on many things like their anthropometrics and also just their mobility that the individual has through things like their thoracic spine and also their shoulders um, and their wrists. If someone does have an issue in terms of uh, shoulder, elbow, or wrist comfort, generally that's going to be driven by some sort of thoracic spine mobility issues um, that are stemming downstream into the arm. Me personally, I like to grab the bar uh, fairly close, as you can see here. And what we're looking to achieve here is a tight upper back where the elbows and wrists are uh, as aligned with each other as possible, but definitely a key thing is trying to get those elbows down on so you can see that here also with this upper back shot. Next thing we're going to look at then is how we set the feet and the knees up when we're about to take the bar out. Uh, feet um, position is going to be individual to the person too in terms of you know having them fairly straight or toed out. It's up to the person's uh, comfort levels. The main thing is that we always want the weight distributed between the big toe, the little toe and the heel as you can see here. And then with regards with the knees, we want those knees to always be tracking the center of the foot. Some people say second toe, but we definitely never want to let those knees cave inward to a balanced position. Okay, setting up a, a neutral spine then for the squat. This goes back to our breathing drill. What we'll get the person to do here is overextend their back, then even over flex their back, and then bring it into their most neutral position where we have that rib cage stacked above the pelvis. Okay, then we're going to look at the walkout. Once we get into that position where we're under the bar and we're pretty confident we're in a neutral position with our spine and root cages over the pelvis, from there it's just simply squatting the bar up off the J-hooks. It's a one-two step back and just setting the feet into that person's comfortable squat stance. Okay, with the descent then, essentially what we're going to do here in terms of weight distribution, our center of uh, mass should be uh, between the center of our foot as we squat down in a high bar back squat, uh, we want to keep that center of mass as aligned over the center of the foot as possible. Now the weight will shift more towards the heels as we go down, but we definitely want to keep our tripod foot position where uh, big toe, little toe and heel are maintaining contact with the ground. We want to keep those knees also uh, in line with the center of the feet, and not let any valgus moment happen in the knees. In the bottom position, we're still looking to keep the weight distributed on our tripod foot. We still want the knees to be in line with the feet, and we want the low back to be neutral. From this side view, the tibia and the torso should be pretty parallel to each other, and ideally the person should be getting the crest of the hip below the knee joint, and that would be considered a squat below parallel. The center of the barbell should also be in line with the middle of the foot. Key thing in that bottom position is that we're not dropping down into a position where we're getting a posterior tilting of the pelvis and what's commonly known as the butt wink. 
Okay, then with the ascent, once we've reached that bottom position from the ascent, we're basically just going to push that ground away through our feet, particularly initiating them through the heels in that bottom position, and the weight will then shift backwards to the center of the foot as we start to rise out of the bottom position. In the top position, we just want to brace our midsection and squeeze our glutes. Final thing then is just walking the bar back in, which is simply just a reversal of how we took the bar out. We just take one, two step in, drop the bar back in the J-hooks, and that's our high bar back squat.